Good morning. This is the, sem the September 13th, 2023 meeting of the Rochester Regional Board of Review. This hearing is being held via video conference on WebEx at the following locations, Greestown Hall, Community Rooms A and B at Once Vince Toffany Boulevard, Rochester, New York, 14612. The time is 9.03 and this hearing is officially open. Uh, the members of the board are to my left, Rick Pappage, to my immediate right, Mark Cavanaugh, uh, to my far right, Craig Jensen, and John Limbeck, our, our sitting code official, is joining us remotely today. From the Department of State, we have Dan Fairley and Chris Jensen. We will now hear the scheduled petitions. When you speak, please make sure that you clearly state your record for um, your or your address rather for the public record and make sure to uh, use north, south, east, west and, and other orientations so the court reporter can understand uh, what you're pointing to at, at drawings and other exhibits. <clears throat> the first hearing is in the matter of petition number 2023-0292. The petitioner is Empire Commercial Construction. <clears throat> this petition pertains to the alteration of an existing mixed use building of groups A2 and R2, construction type 1B, 15 stories in height, 190,364 square feet in gross floor area, known as the Link Building, located at 183 East Main Street in the city of Rochester, County of Monroe, <clears throat> State of New York. This petition was originally heard by the board on July 12th, 2023. At that time, the petitioner was seeking relief from four different sections of the building code. The petition was adjourned to permit the applicant an opportunity to present additional information in support of this petition. In furtherance of this request, they have modified their design to eliminate some of the non-compliant features and to accommodate a request from the City of Rochester Fire Marshal. <clears throat> the revised petition now seeks relief from 19 NYCRR Part 1221, Building Code of New York State, Section 1011.2, um, titled Width and Capacity, which requires a minimum width of a stairway to be 44 inches and less serving an occupant load of less than 50 persons. The petitioner wishes to remove two side-by-side -side escalators and replace them with fixed stairways that are limited to 35 inches in width due to physical constraints. You may proceed. Yeah. Uh, Martin Coaxed with Empire Commercial Construction. Address is 105 Dispatch Drive in East Rochester. Steve Cullum, Hamlin Architects, 1300 University Ave, Rochester. And we've also got Zach and Agathy, um, who are the tenants for the, the space. And we thought we'd have them speak first. Sorry, so uh, I'm Edward Graham. This is my wife, Agathe. Hi, I'm Agathe Graham. And can we give our address as well? Please. Okay, so our address is uh, 205 Knights Trail West, uh, Rochester, New York. Uh, I'm sorry, could I get the spelling of your name first and last, please? Yeah, go ahead. Probably me. Agathe, that's A, G as in George, A, T as in Tom, H, I. Last name Graham, G R A H A M. First name Edward, E D W A R D, Graham. So, um, yeah, we didn't have anything totally prepared for this, but um, you know, we just wanted to say that this particular item is it was a big issue for us when we initially started when we were interested in the space. It's you know a beautiful sort of entrance up into the space. Um, it provides a lot of uh, logistical sort of help in just getting folks into the space and out of the space uh, for large events. Um, and, you know, just aside from that, it's absolutely stunning. And, you know, it would be a terrible thing. I think it would be an absolute travesty if this kind of just went 
entombed and unused for, you know, the next 12 years while we're there. So, um, you know, that's kind of where we're at with this. And I kind of chime in with a little bit of history. Um, Zach and I have been working with, we've been developing these wedding venues for quite a while. We opened up our first in downtown Rochester called the Arbor Loft in 2016. And then we took over what was the old fast ferry terminal, made that into a wedding venue in 2018. And we just really enjoy taking what was old and developing into something new. Um, and when we found this space, I immediately fell in love. And as Zach said, like walking up the staircases and into this grand room, it's just spectacular. And um, I have pictures to prove it. We've been renovating it. It's, it's absolutely stunning. Um, it would be quite the detriment and we're just sort of honored here today to talk to you more specifically about the project and we hope it goes our way. So crossing our fingers. Thank you. Yeah, Thank we'll be you. Brief, so. We'll be brief. Thanks. <coughs> uh, so Martin Cox again, Empire Commercial Construction. Uh, so I just want to kind of recap where we were in July, what we talked about, um, you know, and then go through the last 2 months, kind of how we got to today. And then we can walk through the, um, the drawing set and the revisions that we've made. Uh, so in July, we, like, uh, the chair said, we were asking for 4 variances, lack of landing the rise. Um, the difference of rise in our stairs, and then finally, the width of the stairs. Um, and as we discussed, the board adjourned us for more information, which we appreciate. Um, as opposed to just saying no, and then, you know, we'd have to go through this process again. Um, so the more information that we discussed that was needed was the historic uh, documents, the the application um, and the approvals from the, the state historic preservation board, which we've we've included in the variance um, application. Uh, there was a discussion about the egress, uh, which I'll get into last. Um, you know, we were kind of, at that time of July's meeting. We were kind of in a, a you know. Getting our rough inspections completed, so there was a lot of walkthroughs and things of that nature happening. So, you know, just timing wise, we didn't have a chance to update the drawings and submit for the. The July board, which now is 100% completed with the, the egress and the, um, the additional door out of the, the east side. Um, so that's updated and we can go into that. Uh, there's information requested on the existing escalator, which hopefully we can provide. I, we've answered some questions in July and happy to answer them again today. Um, and then finally, the financials of the project were, were uh, requested from us. Um, basically, on that, we've revised our variance application to exclude any economic burden um, reasoning behind this project. Just because, you know, with discussions with ownership, um, you know, our team together, it's not really um, it's not really fitting into this this variance specifically. The need for an economic burden just because of the, you know, the, the building itself, um, you know, the escalators and the work that we're doing is not really, uh, it doesn't really fit the mold of the economic burden reasoning for the variance. So we've excluded that uh, from our application. So, in the last 2 months, the revised application, uh, we've done some digging, we've done our homework. Um, we have spent a little time, you know, with our contractors, you know, exploring underneath the escalators, looking at, you know, Looking at underneath the treads, what we could see without, you know, completely modifying the entire thing. Um, and, you know, basically put our heads together with, with the, the design team, um, with everyone involved. And we've come up with what we feel is our best near code compliance there. We're talking, um, so. Instead of 4 variances, we now only need 1 variance for the width of the stairs. Um, and they, you know. Basically takes it from what we had before, which is 4 variances for a set of stairs is a lot, you know, thinking about it, it's a lot for for. You know, a, something that could potentially be used as egress, not the main egress, but, um, you know, we got it down to 1 and to a point where it, it's, it's more acceptable um, to the city, more acceptable to everyone. So, um, kind of just want to walk through what we've what we've discussed here. So the photo board is exhibit a. Um, you know, the big thing with the, with the photo board is we want to show you what it was in history. Um, as, uh, the tenant said, um, you know, this was the grand entrance, this, the, the entrance to the space in the former bank, 
was from the first floor to the second floor. It's, you know, it's a magnificent, beautiful space. And, you, you know, you enter right at the north end. You're met with 30 foot ceilings, massive windows on the side. You're met with, you know, just this magnificent space. Um, and then kind of current condition, it's still in that current condition, obviously with a lot of dust from construction. Um, and then what we're planning to do uh, if this variance is, is approved. So um, going into the details of it, of our revision, we want to um, remove what we can from the treads, um, get down to the actual truss of the escalator, tack weld, angle iron, in order for us to put the metal pans in to the existing truss cradle, and then we pour concrete on top of the pan and then put the, the final flooring on the, on the concrete. Um, the more digging we have to do is, you know, getting into the landing, which we revised, uh, the landing would be at the top, which you can see in exhibit B. Um, so we've added that landing to, to, uh, meet that code section. Exhibit C is the structurals. Uh, we, we've worked with Poply design group, Matt Abate there, uh, to come up with, with our structural drawings. Um, and this is feasible in his mind. There's no. There was no, you know, we walked through them multiple times with him. There's no questions about the structure, about the, the integrity of the trust that we have in the escalator. Um, and, and that's why we were so confident in making this, this revision to the plan. Um, so going to the, the, the brass, the, you know, one of our main constraints here, if you remember from July, is the brass balustrades uh, uh, going vertical, if you will, the railings. Um, the state historic board, they, they want to see those remain. Um, they've made that quite clear and you can see that in exhibit D um, that's in the narrative and the approvals. So our main constraint was the width of, of that brass at the truss itself. Um, you know, we have 35 inches and, and that truss actually goes right up next to that brass balustrade. So making it impossible for us to, to you know, widen our staircase to the, the required 44 inches um, without serious, you know, digging into the truss and, and it just wouldn't make it feasible if we go ahead and do that. Um, so our plan kind of meets those two major constraints with the SHPO and, and um, the code. And then, as I said, in exhibit F, the floor plan, which we've updated with the door updates um, in July, there was some concern with, with the city and with the board about these escalator stairs being used um, in the event of an emergency, an event of, of call it panic in, in the second floor. Um, you know, what we've done in the meantime was you know, on the east side of exhibit F, on the east side of our, of our um, space, we've got new code compliant doors um, that lead directly to the outside. And where you are in space on, on the floor plan A2.0, you can see those doors from anywhere on the second floor. There's nowhere, you know, there's one small section of the front where you can't see visibly that, that exit to the, directly to the outside. So that's why, you know, we're confident that that is the main, that's going to be the main focus. If something happens, if, if panic sets in, fire alarms are going off, people are going to automatically see that, that light coming from the outside and use that instead of our um, escalator stairs. So hopefully that kind of clears up the main concerns that we had in July. Um, we've also included some letters of support from uh, the local leaders, um, people that are very familiar with, with uh, Zach and Agathe, their, you know, their business and their, um, their character. You know, I think it speaks a lot to uh, the type of of potential that this space has, and and the 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 just overall you know interest and and um, what's the word? Just overall, just you know, support for this project. I think it's important to include those in Exhibit G and H. So you know, with this constraints and and everything that we've done in the in the two months here since we met last, um, you know. I think we've got it to a point where it's as, as code compliant as, as um, we need it to be. Um, and, you know, Kazmik is here from the city of Rochester. He's also 
uh, been briefed on this and he's had multiple discussions with Steve at Hanlon, um, you know, and his support of this, it, it goes a long way. So it's kind of hard to measure the, the benefits of this, you know, of the grand entrance, you know, until you actually see it, until you're actually maybe at a wedding there. Um, but I don't think it's something that, that can go without stating that this is a huge piece of this project. And um, yeah, at this time I'd open up to Steve or questions. Before you run, mm -hmm. I just want to get one thing clarified. You just testified that you're going to remove as much of the existing escalator treads as you can. Your submittal suggests that they're all being removed and completed. Yes, placed. all of them. Yes. Okay. All of them. Yep. Thank you. That's yep. Good clarification. So yes, all of the treads, existing treads would be removed. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Steve Collin with Hanlon Architects. I don't have much to add. Um, Martin did a great job covering the entirety. We did not, with the increased uh, exit capacity of the, the door that the fire marshal asked us to include, we did not increase our occupant load. So that remains the same from our previous submittal. I'd like to say you guys did a great job of making this work. Thank you. Please. Good morning, uh, Cosmic Reed uh, with the city of Rochester, 40 Calvin Road, Rochester, New York. So I've had um, conversation with, with Steve uh, multiple times and um, in support of it with, with, with the new proposal. Um, the fact that, you know, we get in one another building in the city of Rochester that's going to be utilized, bringing traffic downtown, you know, um, the 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 deviation from the code i don't think it's in my opinion that significant meaning that it's not part this the stairs not going to be one of the main 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 means of egress so um with that said i'm in support of the the variance thank you yeah. is there anybody else that wishes to speak on this matter okay at this time, the board is going to go into deliberation. We'll ask people in the audience to go out into the quarter and uh, we'll let you know when we're ready for a decision. Thank you. Two, nine, two. Do I need to repeat that, Barbara? Yes, please. Okay, at this time, we're going to go back on the record in the matter of petition number 2023-0292. This petition pertains to the alteration of an existing mixed-use occupancy groups A2 assembly and R2 residential of construction type 1B, 15 stories in height, 190,364 square feet in gross floor area, known as the Link Building located at 183 East Main Street, City of Rochester, County of Monroe, State of New York. This petition was originally heard by the board on July 12th, 2023. At that time, the petitioner was seeking relief from four different sections of the building code. The petition was adjourned to permit the applicant an opportunity to provide additional information in support of this petition. In furtherance of their request, they have modified their design to eliminate some of the non-compliant features and to accommodate requests from the City of Rochester Fire Marshal. The revised petition now seeks relief from 19 NYCRR, Part 1221, Building Code of New York State, Section 1011.2, titled Width and Capacity, which requires the minimum width of a stairway to be 44 inches and less serving an occupant load of less than 50 persons. The petitioner wishes to remove two side-by-side escalators and replace them with fixed stairways that are limited to 35 inches in width due to physical constraints. Findings of fact, number one, the subject petition pertains to an alteration of an existing escalator within a building that contains the first two floors with occupancy classification A2 and the remainder of the floors being apartments with an occupancy classification of R2. Number two, an occupancy classification A2 is reserved for buildings in which there is assembly use intended for food and or drink consumption, including banquet halls. Number three, 
Petitioner proposes to remove portions of the existing escalators in order to construct new staircases to access the second floor area, complying with all applicable code provisions except for the minimum width as shown on Exhibit B. Number four, petitioner has provided updated materials which illustrate additional signage, egress doors, and exit paths. Updated egress doors are central to the main ballroom and easily visible throughout the space. Number five, petitioner is seeking relief from the requirement of the 2020 Building Code of New York State Section 1011.2 that requires a stairway with a minimum width of not less than 44 inches. If approved, each new stairway would have a width of 35 inches. Number six, petitioner indicates the new stairways are not part of the required means of egress of the A2 assembly space and would therefore, therefore provide an additional means of egress to evacuate the second floor. Are there any other findings from the board? Okay. The board finds that strict compliance with the uniform code would entail practical difficulties, unnecessary hardship, and would achieve inhibit achievement of an important public policy and would entail a change so slight as to produce a negligible additional benefit consonant with the purpose of the code and that the granting of the requested variance would not substantially adversely affect the facility's health, safety, or security. Wherefore, it is determined that the application for a variance from 19 NYCRR Part 1225, Section 1011.2, be and is hereby approved with the following conditions. Number one, that the work conveyed on the construction documents submitted in support of this application are completed in accordance with the building code. Number two, that an illuminated exit sign be placed over the uh, east door, uh, which is now indicated to be a primary means of egress from the second floor level. And number three, that illumination of all of the means of egress is provided. Any other conditions from the board? Okay, so do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the, uh, how do I say that, Jim? The variance um, as proposed. Do I have a second? One back, I'll second. I'll second. Oh, John snuck in. Second by Mr. Limbeck. Okay. Can I get a vote of the board? Mr. Limbeck? John Limbeck, yes. Mr. Jensen? Yes. Mr. Kavanaugh? Aye. Mr. Pavich? Aye. And I will vote aye, so the record should reflect uh, that the uh, matter was passed by a vote of five to zero. So this decision is limited to the specific building and application before it is contained within the petition and should not be interpreted to give implied approval of any general plans or specifications presented in support of this application. And with that, this matter is closed. Could you tell me who uh, made the motion, please? Uh, Craig Jensen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, Barbara, we're gonna go off the record for a few minutes and uh, um, have a discussion. Uh, We're on the record. Thank you. Okay, at this time we're going to open the hearing in petition number 2023-0376. 
This petition pertains to an existing building containing an R2 occupancy, three stories in height of type 5B wood frame construction located at 1018 Stanley Street in the city of Schenectady, County of Schenectady, State of New York. Relief is being requested from Chapter 61B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 26, titled Egress from Dwellings, which states that in every such dwelling, three stories or more in height, there shall be from each story at least two independent means of egress accessible to each apartment or suite. The petitioner is requesting relief from the requirement that a second means of egress be provided for the third floor dwelling. And relief is also being requested from Chapter 61B of the Consolidated Laws of New York Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 30, titled Cellar Ceilings, which states that in every such dwelling, three stories or more in height, the ceiling of the cellar or of the lowest story, if there be no cellar, shall be fire retardant or equipped with a sprinkler system unless such ceiling has already been plastered to the satisfaction of the department. The petitioner requests relief from the requirement that a fire retarded ceiling or sprinkler system be provided in the cellar of the dwelling. And relief is also being requested from Chapter 61B of the Consolidated Laws of New York Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 31, titled Inside Cellar Stairs, which states that every stair leading from the cellar to the floor above in all old multiple dwellings shall be enclosed with fire retarded partitions and shall be equipped with a fire retarded self closing door located as the department may approve. The petitioner requests relief uh, to not provide a fire rated partition uh, in closing the cellar stairs. Um, the uh, applicant is, uh, if you're ready to speak, you may present. You're on mute, sir. Good morning, folks. Can you hear me now? Yes. Um, you might want to just turn up your your volume of hair or get a little closer to your mic, please. All right. All right. Uh, my name is Dan Morelli with Morelli Design and Construction with an office located at 5159 Western Turnpike in Altamont, New York, secondary office 143 J Street in Schenectady, New York. Uh, today, I'm representing Mr. Ranchan Dersharan and his request for relief from uh, sections 26, 30, and 31. Uh, I do apologize. One thing the board doesn't have, and Dan Farrelly and myself have spoke about this several times, is uh, the drawing that we just gained access to the building on to get interior measurements. I do have that behind me. I'd like to put that on a screen, uh, take my face off screen, and let you look at the drawing while I navigate through it. Uh, that will help understand the building a little bit better. And then after the meeting, I can certainly forward to Dan and to Barbara. Sorry, guys, I thought I had that muted. Um, uh, to Dan and to Barbara, the electronic files of that drawing. So I'll shift to the drawing at this point. Is there a way for him to share his screen rather than point his camera? I'm not really sure how to do that. They're gonna they're gonna teach you. Oh, good. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Computer for sure. Let me get a little. Do you better. do you have that that plan uh, on your computer, Dan? Uh, Dan, I don't have it on this particular computer. I have it on my computer in the other office. Okay. Okay, so maybe you can just uh, uh, go through the rest of your uh, presentation and, and uh, describe the, uh, the features on the plan, if you will. Certainly. And again, I apologize. Moving forward on these submissions, because we have four of them in front of you today, uh, we'll try to get these in uh, well ahead of time. One of our issues is that we can't gain access to these buildings and these apartment units uh, in a timely manner. And uh, it's just working with the tenants, so we're last minute with the drawings. But anyway, uh, Mr. Ranchan 
owns a three-story, three-unit structure located at 1018 Stanley Street in the city of Schenectady, state of New York. As Dan mentioned, classified as an R2 occupancy uh, with type 5B construction. Uh, the building was constructed circa 1910, and the current layout of the building, and I'll kind of go through it on the plan, is a full unfinished basement uh, with one means of egress from the basement up to the first level at the front of the building. The other three floors are fairly identical. Uh, they're two bedroom, one bath, all uh, means of egress to the upper levels is at the front of the building and to the basement is also at the front of the building. Uh, the homeowner currently has installed and has present uh, in yellow interconnected hardwired combo smoke detector carbon monoxide detector units in the basement area. There's two in the basement as noted in yellow. Common areas of the corridors and common areas of each unit. Those are all interconnected and hardwired and do sound off. Uh, when one is set off, the rest do set off. In each bedroom are 10 year lithium, not hardwired and not interconnected smoke detectors. And there's one in each bedroom for a total of six. All doors from the common areas into the units and to the exterior are equipped with self-closing devices. And the door at the top of the stair leading to the basement is equipped with a self-closing device and is a fire rated 90 minute door. At present, there's no means of egress from the third level, no second means of egress from the third level to the, to the grade level. Uh, so we're proposing on putting in a steel fire escape ladder that can be accessed from the porch area, the rear porch area, it's an uncovered porch, access to the grade. The second floor balcony can also access that ladder. And of course, the first floor egress is both from front and back of the building. The applicant is seeking relief from New York section 26, 30, and 31 based on the following finding of facts. Installing a fire retarded ceiling in the unfinished pre-existing basement or installing a sprinkler system would create an excessive and unreasonable economic burden on the property owner and the tenants. The alternate measure to achieve the intended objective is the presence of hardwired and interconnected code compliant combination smoke carbon units throughout the building. And as far as section 26 goes, the future installation of a fire escape on the rear side of the building. So Dan, can I stop you right there for a minute, please? Sure. So Earlier, you mentioned that smoke detecting devices in one or more of the bedrooms were not interconnected, but you just stated that all of the devices in the building are interconnected. Can you clarify that, please? I will, yes. I misspoke. The only interconnected devices in the building are the combo smoke and carbons. The in individual the basement. smokes are battery operated only. Okay. And they're single station battery operated detecting devices. That's correct. Okay. So the so the combination units in the basement are interconnected and there are audible or audio visual notification devices in all of the dwelling units that would be notified if any one of those combination units in the basement went into alarm, is that correct? That is correct. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, proceed. Okay, um, and just to clarify a little further, Dan, uh, the two uh, hardwired interconnected devices in the basement uh, connect to each unit, as well as common areas such as hallways and stair landings. So the only battery, only battery 
operated devices in the building are the individual station smoke detectors in the bedrooms. You have anything else to add or are you ready for some questions? I'm ready for some questions. Okay. So can you describe for the board um, any studies that you may have done to explore the options for getting a secondary means of egress from the third floor dwelling unit to grade? Yes. Uh, we basically had a fire uh, Securities company come out to the site, not me, but the homeowner, and gave pricing to install a steel uh, fire escape ladder system on the back side of the building, fastened directly to the structure. That's about as uh, detailed as it got. So, from a architectural standpoint, is there anything that would be physically or practically? Uh, Preventing the owner from installing this fire escape ladder system, to your knowledge? There is not. And that was on uh, direct site inspection. Any other board members have questions? My name is Mark Cavanaugh. The, uh, the question I have is, um, is has there been any studies on using a domestic sprinkler system for the basement? Uh, there has been, yes. And what what are the outcomes of that study? Uh, the cost, basically, uh, to install that system exceeded what the t uh, landlord could afford. And then the, the the other question I have is just so, I, so I'm clear on it, it is you you are proposing a fire escape from the third floor. That is correct. Okay. Thank you. And and the second floor as well. That is correct. Thank you. Yeah, no questions. Craig Jensen, no questions. Rick? Rick Papich, no questions. John, you have any questions? No questions. Um, so I'd like to uh, uh, embellish Mark's thought about uh, sprinklers in the uh, lower level. So the area of the footprint of the basement is approximately how big, Dan? It's about 830 square feet. 830 square feet. So um, to your knowledge, did they explore a limited area sprinkler system, which is not really a system at all, but just a series of heads without an intervening valve um, that could um, provide some uh, additional time for occupants of the building to evacuate. Uh, to my knowledge, I'm not sure how far they went with that study. Uh, it was between the sprinkler company and the, the, the conversation was between the sprinkler company and the property owner. And okay. I think the prices that he got back uh, were for multiple means to do the work and all prices that he received exceeded the cost that he could spend. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, is there anybody else that wishes to speak on this matter? Uh, Mark Cavanaugh again, uh, just to follow up on Jim's uh, follow up is that uh, how is, do you know how the pressure is water pressure is for uh, that 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 area of, of Schenectady? Uh, the, we, we've done, we have done a study on that ironically and. The neighborhood sections of Schenectady, such as this. Um, it's very low pressure. There's other yep. industrial areas of Schenectady with higher pressure, but this neighborhood is not in one of those. So tapping off a domestic water line, I think, is where you're headed with that um, may not be an option. Okay, can you tell me about what range we're in for very low pressure? Off the top of my head, I'm not sure. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else wish to speak on this matter? Okay, at this time, um, we will go off the record uh, so the board can deliberate and uh, we'll let you know when we're ready to announce our decision.
Okay, uh, at this time we're gonna go back on the record in the matter of petition number 2023-0376. This petition pertains to an existing building containing an R2 occupancy, three stories in height. Yeah, with the, yeah it, it came in. Um, of type 5B, wood frame unprotected construction located at 1018 Stanley Street in the city of Schenectady, county of Schenectady, state of New York. Relief is being requested from Chapter 61B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 26, titled Egress from Dwellings, which states that in every such dwelling three stories or more in height, there shall be from each story at least two independent means of egress accessible to each apartment or suite. And from Chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York State, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 30, titled Cellar Ceilings, which states that in every such dwelling three stories or more in height, the ceiling of the cellar or of the lowest story, if there be no cellar, shall be fire retarded or be equipped with a sprinkler system unless such ceiling has already been plastered to the satisfaction of the department. And from Chapter 61B of the Consolidated Laws of New York Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 31, titled Inside Cellar Stair, which states that every stair leading from the cellar to the floor above in all old multiple dwellings shall be enclosed with fire retarded partitions and shall be equipped with a fire retarded self closing door as the department may approve. I will now read the potential findings. Excuse me, I will now read the findings of fact. Number one, the building that is the subject of this petition is properly classified under Chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 1, Section 4, parentheses 33, as a multiple dwelling. Number two, the subject building is approximately 2,258 square feet in gross area and was originally constructed in the year 1910. Number three, the subject building is required to conform with the provisions of Article 3 of the Multiple Residence Law as provided in Section 25 in that it existed uh, on July 1st, 1952 and is not a hotel or similar dwelling subject to Article 4 of the Multiple Residence Law. Number four, Multiple residence law section 26 requires in every such dwelling three stories or more in height that there shall be from each story at least two independent means of egress accessible to each apartment or suite. The third floor dwelling is lacking a second means of egress. Number five, article three section 30 of the multiple residence law requires in every such dwelling three stories or more in height that the cellar, the ceiling of the cellar or of the lowest story, if there be no cellar, shall be fire retarded or be equipped with a sprinkler system unless such ceiling has already been plastered to the satisfaction of the department. Number six, the lowest story ceiling of this multiple family dwelling is not protected with a fire retardant material and does not contain a sprinkler system. A fire in the cellar could easily spread throughout the building before it is noticed. There is mechanical system piping and electrical wiring along the system, the ceiling of this unoccupied cellar, which would make installing a fire retardant ceiling very difficult. Number seven, as an alternative to compliance with Article 3, Section 30 of the Multiple Residence Law, the applicant has installed two hardwired smoke and carbon monoxide detectors interconnected from the basement to each dwelling unit individually uh, providing early warning in the event of a fire related emergency. Number eight, multiple residence law article three section 31 requires that stairs leading from a cellar to the floor above be enclosed with fire retarded partitions and equipped with a fire retarded self closing door. The stairway that leads to the basement is not enclosed in fire rated construction. Number nine, the door into the basement is <clears throat> not fire rated, but is self closing.
Number 10, the code enforcement official for the city of Schenectady was not present during the hearing. <clears throat> the proposed variance uh, will not substantially adversely affect the law's provisions for health, safety, and security. Strict compliance would entail practical difficulties, unnecessary hardship, or would otherwise be unwarranted because uh, it would be unnecessary in light of alternatives, which without a loss in the level of safety, achieve the intended objective of the code. <clears throat> Wherefore, it is determined that the application for a variance from Chapter 61B of the Consolidated Laws of New York Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Sections 26, 30, and 31, be and are hereby granted with the following conditions. Condition number one, that the existing interconnected smoke and carbon monoxide detectors are installed throughout the building as required by the current code. Number two, that the property owner shall have the city of Schenectady perform uh, tests of the installed interconnected devices to ensure that all devices are properly communicating. Number three, that any entrance door and every door opening into any entrance hall, stair hall, or other public hall connected within shall be self-closing. And number four, that a limited area sprinkler system be installed throughout the basement in accordance with the provisions of NFPA 13 and including a sprinkler head protecting the basement stairway. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. I'll make a motion, John Limbeck. Moved by Mr. Limbeck. Second? Yeah, I'll second that, Craig uh, Jensen. Second by Mr. Jensen. Mr. Pavich. Yes. Mr. Cavanaugh. Nay. Mr. Jensen. Yes. Mr. Limbeck. Yes. I will vote aye, so the record should reflect that this matter was approved by a vote of four to one. This decision is limited to the specific building and application before it is contained within the petition and should not be interpreted to give implied approval of any general plans or specifications presented in support of this application. And with that, we will call this matter closed. You're, uh, you're muted there, Dan. Thank you, folks. Okay, thank you. Dan, did you want to move right into the next one? Sure, absolutely. All right, just give me one second to change my boards. I should have said that, yes. And again, I have a, a drawing for this yeah, building too. Decision when I write it. Okay. Dan Morelli. Do you yes. Ha do you have any of this um, <clears throat> stored on your computer? I do. Is this Barbara? Yeah, if you send it to me, I could share it on the screen. I tell you what, if you can give me about three minutes, I'll get it right over to you. Awesome. Okay, right well, while you're doing that, we'll get this matter on the record. At Sounds this time, we are going to open the hearing in the matter of petition number 2023-0377. This petition pertains to an existing building containing an R2 occupancy, three stories in height of type 5B wood frame unprotected construction located at 822 Bridge Street in the city of Schenectady, County of Schenectady, State of New York. Relief is being requested from Chapter 61B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 30 titled Cellar Ceilings, which states that in every such dwelling, three stories or more in height, the ceiling of the cellar or of the lowest story, if there be no cellar, shall be fire retarded or be equipped with a sprinkler system unless such ceiling has already been plastered to the satisfaction of the department. The petitioner requests relief from the requirement that a fire retarded 
ceiling or sprinkler system be provided in the cellar of the dwelling. Request is also being, uh, uh, relief is also being requested from chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 31, titled Inside Cellar Stairs, which states that every stair leading from the cellar to the floor above in all old multiple dwellings shall be enclosed with fire retarded partitions and shall be equipped with a fire retarded self closing door located as the department may approve. The petitioner requests relief so as not to provide a fire rated partition in the cellar stairs. Mr. Morelli, you may proceed whenever you're ready. Hello, Barbara. Yep, I just got it. Give me one sec. Sure, thanks.
You need it bigger? How Hey, Dan. Yes. Are you guys seeing this? Do you need it bigger or what? I'm talking to Farley. Oh, sorry. Dan, Dan Farley. If you could scroll down so we can see the floor plans, all of them, and I, I can just zoom in on the, our side. How's that? <clears throat> Looks good. Okay. Yeah, Dan, whenever you're ready. Okay. And folks, I apologize. Uh, I, I promise you next time around, we got a lot of these going on. Uh, we'll get the drawings in prior to uh, Dan Farley and I spoke earlier in the week and, and figured out a better solution to make that happen. So in addition to the filings for the application, we'll send drawings in next time also. Uh, anyway, uh, you ready for me to start? Yes, please. Okay. All right, folks, again, Dan Morelli, Morelli Design and Construction. Uh, on this particular case, uh, I'm representing uh, Mr. Uh, Rajaram Arjun and is uh, seeking relief for MRL 30 and 31 uh, for a three story, three unit building that he owns at 822 Bridge Street in the city of Schenectady, in New York. Again, I'm going to put you on uh, my drawing so I can kind of point to it. Uh, this building is very similar to the building we just spoke about, other than the fact that everything in this building is hardwired and, and interconnected. And that includes smoke detectors and carbon monoxide smoke detector combo units. Uh, the building's classified as an R2 occupancy, 5B construction, uh, constructed circa 1900. And the current layout of the building, uh, each floor is very similar in the layout. Each floor has three bedrooms, uh, two means of egress from the front and rear of the building. All doors leading into and out of common area into units are self-closing. And the door leading to the basement or into the basement, as you walk down the rear stairs into the basement, there's a door at the bottom of the stairs that is fire rated and that is self-closing. Uh, each unit, each common area of each unit has a combo uh, smoke carbon detector interconnected and hardwired, including the two in the basement. In the center of each unit within close proximity to each bedroom is also an interconnected hardwired carbon unit. And at the rear door to each unit, is the same in each bedroom and in a common area in the living room are smoke detectors and they are all hardwired and interconnected so in essence if uh, one of the units goes off whether it be smoke carbon or combo they all go off throughout the entire building <coughs> with audio and sound the basement is an unfinished ceiling uh, cluttered with HVAC, mechanical, plumbing, uh, piping, and devices up in the ceiling, making a sheetrock ceiling impractical. Uh, the cost of a sprinkler system, again, uh, was uh, all these neighborhoods are about the same with the water pressure on the domestic water lines. So this particular uh, uh, building is a little bit larger than the one we just spoke about. And um, the cost of a sprinkler system is an econ economic burden on the 
the property owner. Uh, so they're requesting relief from MRL 30 and 31 based on the following findings of fact. Installing a fire rated ceiling in the unfinished pre-existing basement or a sprinkler system would create an excessive hardship and unreasonable economic burden on the property owner. Uh, the alternate solution uh, to achieve the intended objective is the current presence of all interconnected hardwired detection devices throughout the entire building from the basement right up through the third floor. Are there any questions? Yeah, thank you, Dan. Um, uh, you mentioned on uh, page two, item number two in your uh, uh, narrative supporting document that uh, uh, you believe um, installing a sprinkler system um, would create an excessive and unreasonable economic burden. Uh, do you have any financial data to support uh, your your uh, contention that this would create an economic hardship? I, I don't have any on me at the present time, but I know the, the property owner did secure pricing from a sprinkler company uh, in addition to uh, the pricing he spent to bring the building uh, to code prior to this MRL law taking effect about a year and a half ago. Uh, as to the cost he spent on installing the hardwired devices, but I do not no have information that uh, on rents, revenues, taxes, upkeep, any of that information. I don't have that, but I can certainly get it for you. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other board members have any questions? Yes, this is uh, Mark Cavanaugh again. Uh, could you uh, give me the uh, estimate size of the basement, please? Yes. Just under 1200 feet. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. This is John Limbeck. Um, is it possible with any of these applications to get pictures uh, of the basement and these stairways leading down to them? Certainly. I mean, just going for, going forward, I think that would be, you know, I, I see the front and the back of the building, but it would be a lot easier for me to look at these basements and the uh, stairways and out of them. It's we just can certainly do that. Yes, John. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak on this matter? No, I'm good. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Dan. At this time, we're go going to go off the record to deliberate. We will let you know when we're ready with our decision. Okay, thank you. Uh, please. We're on the record. Okay. Um, uh, now we will uh, read the board's decision in the matter of petition number 2023-0377. This petition pertains to an existing building containing an R2 occupancy, three stories in height of type 5B, Wood frame unprotected construction located at 822 Bridge Street, City of Schenectady, County of Schenectady, State of New York. <clears throat> uh, petitioner, petitioner is seeking relief from Chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 30, titled Cellar Ceilings, which states that in every such dwelling three stories or more in height, the ceiling of the cellar or of the lowest story, if there be no cellar, shall be fire retarded or be equipped with a sprinkler system unless such ceiling has already been plastered to the satisfaction of the department. And from 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 31, titled Inside Cellar Stairs, which states that every stair leading from the cellar to the floor above in all old multiple dwellings shall be enclosed with fire retarded partitions and shall be equipped with a fire retarded self-closing door located as the department may approve. I will now read the findings of fact. Number one, the building that is the subject of this petition is properly classified under 61B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 1, Section 4, parentheses 33, as a multiple dwelling. The subject building is approximately 4,020 square feet in gross floor area and was originally constructed in 1900. 
Three, the subject building is required to conform with the provisions of Article 3 of the Multiple Residence Law as provided in Section 25 in that it existed on July 1st, 1952 and is not a hotel or similar dwelling subject to Article 4 of the Multiple Residence Law. Finding number four, Article 3, Section 30 of the Multiple Residence Law requires in every such dwelling three stories or more in height, the ceiling of the cellar or of the lowest story if there be no cellar shall be fire retarded or be equipped with a sprinkler system unless such ceiling has already been plastered to the satisfaction of the department. Number five, the lowest story ceiling of this multiple dwelling is not enclosed with fire retardant material and does not contain a sprinkler system. A fire in the cellar could easily spread throughout the building before it is noticed. There is mechanical system piping and electrical wiring along the ceiling of this unoccupied cellar, which would make installing a fire retardant ceiling very difficult. Number six, as an alternative to compliance with Article 3, Section 30 of the Multiple Residence Law, the applicant has installed a hardwired smoke and carbon monoxide uh, detection devices interconnected from the basement to each dwelling unit individually uh, and would provide early warning in the event of a fire-related emergency. Number seven, Multiple Residence Law Article 3, Section 31 requires that stairs leading from a cellar to the floor above be enclosed with fire retarded partitions and equipped with a fire retarded self-closing door. The stairway that leads to the basement is not enclosed in fire rated construction. Number eight, the door at the bottom of the basement stair is fire retarded and self-closing. Number nine, the code enforcement official for the city of Schenectady was not present during the hearing, but supports the granting of the requested variance. The board finds that the proposed variance will not substantially adversely affect the law's provisions for health, safety, and security, and that strict compliance would entail practical difficulties, unnecessary hardship, or would otherwise be unwarranted because such would be unnecessary in light of alternatives, which without a loss in the level of safety, achieve the intended objective of the law. Wherefore, it is determined that the application for a variance from Chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Sections 30 and 31, be and are hereby granted with the following conditions. Number one, that the existing interconnected smoke and carbon monoxide detectors are installed and located throughout the building as required by current code. Number two, that the property owner shall have the city of Schenectady perform a test of the installed interconnected devices to ensure all devices are properly communicating and installed. Number three, that any entrance door and every door opening into any entrance hall, stair hall, or other public hall connected therewith shall be self-closing. Do I have a motion? So moved on a motion, Mark Cavanaugh. Do I have a second? Rick Papich, second. Okay, um, we're gonna take a vote now. Mr. Limbeck? John Limbeck, aye. Mr. Jensen? Greg Jensen, aye. Mr. Cavanaugh? Mark Cavanaugh, aye. Mr. Pavich? Aye. I will vote aye, so the record should reflect that this matter was approved by a vote of five to zero. Uh, this decision is limited to the specific building and application before it is contained within the petition and should not be interpreted to give implied approval of any general plans or specifications presented in support of this application. And with that, this matter is now closed. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Dan. <clears throat> Um, does anybody need to take a break or is it okay if we roll right into 78? Okay. Okay. This, Mr. Pappage uh, needs to take a brief uh, recess. Perfect.
we're ready to go back on the record. We're on the record. Okay, the board will now hear petition number 2023-0378. Hey, this petition. Um, Jim, Jim. Yes. Um, can we start over? Give me a sec. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Go ahead, you're all good. Okay. Okay, the board will now hear petition number 2023-0378. Uh, this petition pertains to an existing building containing an R2 occupancy, three stories in height <coughs> of type 5B wood frame, unprotected construction located at 1381 Union Street in the city of Schenectady, county of Schenectady, state of New York. Petitioner is seeking relief from Chapter 61B <clears throat> of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 30, titled Cellar Ceilings, which states that in every such dwelling, three stories or more in height, the ceiling of the cellar or of the lowest story, if there be no cellar, shall be fire retarded or be equipped with a sprinkler system, unless such ceiling has already been plastered to the satisfaction of the department. The petitioner requests relief from the requirement that a fire retarded ceiling or sprinkler system be provided in the cellar of the dwelling. Uh, and from chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 31, titled Inside Cellar Stairs, which states that every stair leading from the cellar to the floor above in all old multiple dwellings shall be enclosed with fire retarded partitions and shall be equipped with a fire retarded self-closing door located as the department may approve. The petitioner requests relief to not provide a fire rated partition in the cellar stairs. You are uh, okay to proceed, Dan. Okay, folks. Again, Dan Morelli, uh, representing uh, property owner, Brian Cody. Uh, just read your uh, address for the record, please. Yes, uh, 5159 Western Turnpike, Altamont, New York, 12009. Good. Okay. Uh, again, uh, representing Mr. Brian Cody uh, and his uh, seeking relief of MRL 30 and 31 uh, for an existing three-story building uh, with three rental apartment units located at 1381 Union Street in the city of Schenectady, New York. Uh, the building is classified as an R2 occupancy, 5B construction. And this building is a little unique in the sense that uh, Mr. Cody is in the process of a pending sale of the building. They do have prospective buyers and all the devices in the building now are present, but battery operated, nothing is hardwired. So the basement is an unfinished ceiling. It does have two lithium smoke detectors, which are not interconnected or hardwired. Uh, first floor, second floor, third floor, common areas and main entry to each unit. Also has a battery operated CO detector combo unit and each bedroom has a lithium not interconnected or hardwired smoke detection system. Uh, Mr. Cody as part of the sale is either willing to put money in escrow for the new owner to provide whatever's requested by the board of review or perform the work prior to the sale. Are there any questions for me? So, describe the conditions of the cellar stair, please. Okay, so the cellar stairs, the only entrance to the cellar stairs are around the back side of the building. Uh, it's a corner lot. So, there's a street, a Union Street, and perpendicular on the right side of the building is Park Avenue. Uh, you can access the basement through a rear set of stairs, which are enclosed uh, to the basement. Self-closing the device is on the door at the bottom of the stairs, but it is not a fire rated door. Uh, 
Thank you. I have no questions. Uh, any, any other board members have questions for this? Yep, uh, Mark Cavanaugh. And uh, again, could you give me the uh, square footage of the basement, please? Yes, the square footage of the basement is about 1300 square feet. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, no questions. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak on this matter? No questions. Rick? No questions. Okay. Um, thank you, Dan. At this time, uh, the board's going to go into deliberation. Uh, we will let you know when we're ready with the decision. Okay, thank you. We're on the record. Okay. <clears throat> Um, the board will now uh, read the decision in the matter of petition number 2023-0378. This petition pertains to an existing building containing an R3, I'm sorry, R2 occupancy, three stories in height of type 5B wood frame unprotected construction located at 1381 Union Street in the city of Schenectady, County of Schenectady, State of New York. <coughs> A uh, petitioner is seeking relief from Chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 30, titled Cellar Ceilings, which states that in every such dwelling, three stories or more in height, the ceiling of the cellar or of the lowest story, if there be no cellar, shall be fire retarded or be equipped with a sprinkler system unless such ceiling has already been plastered to the satisfaction of the department. And from Chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 31, titled Inside Cellar Stairs, which states that in every stair leading from the cellar to the floor above in all old multiple dwellings shall be enclosed with fire retarded partitions and shall be equipped with a fire retarded self-closing door located as the department may approve. <coughs> Findings of fact, number one, the building that is the subject of this petition is property classified under chapter 61B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 1, Section 4, parentheses 33, as a multiple dwelling. Number two, the subject building is approximately 3,284 square feet in gross area, originally constructed in 1900. Number three, <coughs> the subject building is required to conform with the provisions of Article 3 of the Multiple Residence Law as provided in Section 25 in that it existed on July 1st, 1952 and is not a hotel or similar dwelling subject to Article 4 of the Multiple Residence Law. Number four, Article 3, Section 30 of the Multiple Residence Law requires in every such dwelling three stories or more in height, the ceiling of the cellar or of the lowest story if there be no cellar, shall be fire retarded or be equipped with a sprinkler system unless such ceiling has already been plastered to the satisfaction of the department. <clears throat> Number five, the lowest story ceiling of this multifamily dwelling is not protected with a fire retardant material and does not contain a sprinkler system. A fire in the cellar could easily spread throughout the building before it is noticed. There is mechanical system piping and electrical wiring along the ceiling of this unoccupied cellar, which would make installing a fire retardant ceiling very difficult. <clears throat> Number six, as an alternative to compliance with Article 3, Section 30 of the Multiple Residence Law, the applicant has agreed to install new hardwired smoke <laughs> and carbon monoxide detection devices interconnected throughout from the basement to each unit individually uh, to provide early warning in the event of a fire-related emergency. Number seven, uh, multiple residence law, Article 3, Section 31, requires that stairs leading from a cellar to the floor above be enclosed with fire-retarded partitions and equipped with a fire-retarded self-closing door. The stairway that leads to the basement is not enclosed in fire rated construction. <clears throat> Number eight, the door into the basement is not fire rated, but is self-closing. Number nine, 
The code enforcement official for the city of Schenectady was not present during the hearing, um, but has indicated uh, their support for the granting of the requested variance. The proposed variance would not substantially adversely affect the law's provisions for health, safety, and security. Strict compliance would entail practical difficulties, unnecessary hardship, or would otherwise be unwarranted uh, <clears throat> or be unnecessary in light of alternatives, which, without a loss in the level of safety, achieve the intended objective of the law. Wherefore, it is determined that the application for a variance from Chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Sections 30 and 31, be and are hereby granted with the following conditions. Number one, that interconnected smoke and carbon monoxide detection devices are installed throughout the building in locations required by current code. Number two, that the property owner shall have the city of Schenectady perform a test of the installed interconnected devices to ensure all devices are properly communicating and installed. Number three, that the existing basement door be replaced with a solid core wood door uh, with full applied perimeter stops. Number four, that any entrance door and every door opening into any entrance hall, stair hall, or other public hall connected therewith shall be self-closing. Do I have a motion? Lynn Beck, I'll make a motion. Second? Yeah, I'll second that. Okay. Mr. Papich. Yeah. Mr. Kavanaugh. Aye. Mr. Jensen. Aye. Mr. Limbeck. Aye. So the record should reflect that this variance was granted by a vote of five to zero. <clears throat> and furthermore, this decision is limited to the specific building and application before it is contained within the petition and should not be interpreted to give implied approval of any general plans or specifications presented in support of this application. And with that, we will declare this matter closed. Yes, can you tell me who uh, seconded? Uh, that was Craig Jensen. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, does anybody wish to take a break or can we roll right into petition 79? How about the project architect? You good with uh, with moving on here, Dan? I'm good with moving on. Okay. The board will now hear the matter of petition number 2023-0379. This petition pertains to an existing building containing an R2 occupancy, three stories in height of type 5B wood frame unprotected construction located at 947 Maple Avenue in the city of Schenectady, county of Schenectady, state of New York. Petitioner is seeking relief from chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 30, titled Cellar Ceilings, which states that in every such dwelling, three stories or more in height, the ceiling of the cellar, or of the lowest story if there be no cellar, shall be fire retarded or be equipped with a sprinkler system unless such ceiling has already been plastered to the satisfaction of the department. The petitioner requests relief from the requirement that a fire retarded ceiling or sprinkler system be provided in the cellar of the dwelling. And from chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 31, titled Inside Cellar Stairs, which states that every stair leading from the cellar to the floor above in all old multiple dwellings shall be enclosed with fire retarded partitions and shall be equipped with a fire retarded self-closing door located as the department may approve. The petitioner requests relief to not provide a fire rated partition in the cellar stair. Dan, you are clear to proceed. All right. Folks, I do got to pref preface this with saying I would have loved to come up and spend the day with you guys today, but you're about five hours away from home base and it's raining. So I felt it'd be better if I stayed down in Albany, but maybe next time. Okay. 
All right. Unfortunately, I don't have a drawing to show you. Don't pay attention to what's on the board behind me. That's just a rendering. I don't have a drawing on this property. We did start and draw the perimeter, uh, but since our initial inspection, we could not get back inside the building uh, to get any real dimensions. So um, I'm going to try to walk you through the building. It's pretty much a rectangle. Uh, it's a fairly large rectangle, uh, three stories high. Um, uh, property owner Maurice Bostich and his company, Bostich Property Management, is seeking relief from MRL 30 and 31. Um, it, there's two buildings side by side, so next month we'll have another one identical building coming up. Uh, I don't know if you see the elevation photograph that I showed, but there's two identical buildings, one on the left, one on the right. And um, other than the front porch is a little different, but basically... Uh, it's a 12 unit apartment building. Uh, there's a center corridor down the dead center of the building uh, with a stair to the right as you go in on the front and the back that brings you to the other floors. Uh, access to the basement is both from the front and the rear floors. Uh, there is a fire rated do uh, door self closing on both entrances to the basement at the basement level. Um, there's four units on each level for a total of 12. So there's two on the left side and two on the right side of the corridor reflected three times. Um, all doors leading into the units off the corridor have self-closing devices. Uh, the basement is equipped with multiple uh, hardwired interconnected combo smoke carbon units. The hallways and common stairwells are also connected with the same interconnected uh, combo units. Entry of each apartment as you walk through the door within close proximity to the bedroom is equipped with combo smoke carbon hardwired units interconnected and each bedroom is connected with uh, there's two bedrooms per unit so each bedroom is connected with a, a hardwired interconnected smoke device so basically the whole building is hardwired from basement right up through third floor uh, with interconnected hardwired devices uh, when you set one off in the basement it does set the whole building off i did test it when i was there initially uh, and we walked through the building and we could hear it very clearly through the entire building. Uh, the basement is unfinished uh, and the applicant is seeking relief from MRL 30 and 31 based on the following findings. Uh, installing a fire retardant ceiling in the unfinished pre-existing basement or installing a sprinkler system would create an excessive and unreasonable economic burden on the property owner and the tenants, especially based on the size of the building and the alternate measure, uh, alternate measure to achieve uh, the goal is the current presence of all interconnected hardwired devices throughout the building, which are in working order. Uh, the building was inspected about a year ago. The devices have been in place uh, prior to MRL kicking in. Uh, did pass for tenant certificates, rental certificates in years past. A new owner took the building over. Uh, has upgraded certain things in the building and uh, would like the relief from MRL 30 and 31 at this time. Are there any questions for me? So, for starters, the uh, multiple residence law dates back to the 1950s. Yes. So, you know, so it's not a new law, um, just for clarification. Uh, Understood. And uh, again, you're you're mentioning economic hardship. Do you have any financial information that would support an actual economic hardship? I'm not physically other than what they've told me and the prices that they've given me from contractors. Okay. Um, unfortunately, that's not admissible as a grounds for a variance, but uh, appreciate your, your candor. <laughs> um, I don't have any further questions. Um, does anybody else have questions? Yes, uh, Mark Cavanaugh, uh, two questions. Can you explain what's happening on that top floor? So 
is that a half story? It almost looks like a four story. So something's going on on the top floor. What is it? Just an attic? Is there a... That's, yeah, that's just uh, attic space, unused attic space. Okay. Uh, storage, do they let tenants store things up there? Uh, they don't let tenants store anything up there. Actually, it was vacant when I went up there and looked. Uh, so there's no storage of anything at this time. And I don't think the landlord intends on letting anybody store anything up there. Okay, and the second question I have is, uh, in the picture, it looks like there's at least a dumpster in the driveway. Is there renovations occurring at this time? or uh, know, there, there is renovations occurring, yes. They were doing some uh, interior uh, painting and spackling and uh, some replacement of some doors. All right. That's all for me. Thank you. Craig, no questions. John, you have any questions? No, I don't. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to speak to this matter? Um, hearing none, um, the the board will go off the record and and deliberate, and we will let you know when we're ready with our decision. On record. Okay, uh, we are now going back on the record in the matter of petition number two zero two three dash zero three seven nine. Um, and I'll now read the board's decision. Uh, this petition pertains to an existing building containing an R2 occupancy three stories in height of type 5B wood frame unprotected construction located at 947 Maple Avenue in the city of Schenectady, County of Schenectady, State of New York. Petitioner is seeking relief from Chapter 61B of the Consolidated Laws of New York Multiple Residence Law Article 3, Section 30, titled Cellar Ceilings, which states that in every such dwelling three stories or more in height, the ceiling of the cellar or of the lowest story, if there be no cellar, shall be fire retarded or be equipped with a sprinkler system unless such ceiling has already been plastered to the satisfaction of the department. And from Chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 31, titled Inside Cellar Stairs, which states that every stair leading from the cellar to the floor above in all old multiple dwellings shall be enclosed with fire retarded partitions and shall be equipped with a fire retarded self-closing door located as the department may approve. And I'll now read the findings of fact. Number one, the building that is the subject of this petition is properly classified under Chapter 61B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 1, Section 4, parentheses 33, as a multiple dwelling. Number two, the subject building is approximately 6,571 square feet in gross area, originally constructed in 1920. Number three, the subject building is required to conform with the provisions of Article 3 of the Multiple Residence Law, as provided in Section 25, in that it existed on July 1st, 1952, and is not a hotel or similar dwelling subject to Article 4 of the Multiple Residence Law. Number four, Article 3, Section 30 of the Multiple Residence Law requires in every such dwelling three stories or more in height, the ceiling of the cellar or of the lowest story if there be no cellar shall be fire retarded or be equipped with a sprinkler system unless such ceiling has already been plastered to the satisfaction of the department. Number five, the lowest story ceiling of this multiple dwelling is not enclosed with fire retardant material and does not contain a sprinkler system. A fire in the cellar could easily spread throughout the building before it is noticed. There is mechanical system piping and electrical wiring along the ceiling of this unoccupied cellar, which would make installing a fire retardant ceiling very difficult. Number six, as an alternative to compliance with Article 3, Section 30 of the Multiple Residence Law, the applicant has installed hardwired smoke and carbon monoxide detection devices interconnected from the basement to each unit individually that would provide early warning in the event of a fire-related emergency. Number seven, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 31, requires that stairs leading from a cellar to the floor above be enclosed with fire retarded partitions and equipped with a fire retarded self-closing door. The stairway that leads to the basement is enclosed. Uh, I'm sorry, 
the stairway that leads to the basement is not enclosed in fire rated construction. Number eight, the door into the basement is fire rated and self closing. Number nine, the code enforcement official for the city of Schenectady was not present during the hearing, but supports the granting of the requested variance. Do I have a motion to approve? I'll uh, move as presented. Second. Rick Pepich. Second. Uh, did you get that, Barb? Craig Jensen. Yeah, Craig uh, Jensen. Move the motion. the motion. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> therefore, the proposed variance will not substantially adversely affect the law's provisions for health, safety, and security. Strict compliance would entail practical difficulties, unnecessary hardship, or would otherwise be unnecessary in light of alternatives, which, without a loss in the level of safety, achieve the intended objective of the law. Wherefore, it is determined that the application for a variance from Chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Sections 30 and 31, B and R hereby granted with the following conditions. Number one, that the existing interconnected smoke and carbon monoxide devices are installed and located throughout the building as required by current code. Number two, that the property owner shall have the city of Schenectady perform a test of the installed uh, interconnected devices to ensure all devices are properly communicating and installed. And number three, that any entrance door and every door opening into an entrance hall, stair hall, or other public hall connected therewith shall be self-closing. Uh, should be noted that this decision is limited to the specific specific building and application before it is contained within the petition and should not be interpreted to give implied approval of any general plans or specifications presented in support of this application. And with that, this matter and this hearing are closed. We have to call for an individual vote on this. Yes, I'm sorry. Mr. Papage. Aye. Mr. Cavanaugh. Aye. Mr. Jensen. Aye. Mr. Limbeck. Aye. I will vote aye, so the record should reflect that this matter was approved by a vote of five to zero. And with that, we'll declare this matter closed and this hearing closed. Thank you.